Welcome back to Charlottesville. North Carolina has won the toss. And they have elected to defer to the second half. Mac Brown in his seventh year, what a job he has done. And that record would be a whole lot better, but the first two years were disasters for Mac. He really turned it around after that and has had Carolina on a roll. Meanwhile, on the other side of the field, this guy is the winningest coach not only in Virginia history, but at the Naval Academy, where he not only played, but coached for so many years prior to coming to Virginia back in the early 80s. He is now the winningest coach at both those institutions. And as we mentioned, this is the South's oldest rivalry. Actually, Minnesota-Wisconsin has the longest in NCAA history. This is the sixth overall, and it's the 99th meeting between these two teams. Virginia has won the last six in a row played here in Scott Stadium. Scott Caparelli, a junior from Virginia Beach, Virginia, will kick off for North Carolina. Again, the Tar Heels won the toss and have deferred Demetrius Allen number two and Rondé Barber one of the Barber twins of Virginia are going to be the two deep men for the Cavaliers. This place is packed the second year in a row they have played here because of the adjustments being made to the ACC schedule to try to get everybody four home games. Caparelli with a high kick and it's fairly deep. Demetrius Allen at about the one. Fine play by number 24, Reggie Love. A reserve defensive back and a true freshman who went through the block to make the tackle. So we'll have an opportunity to see not only a pretty good quarterback, but a very interesting offense. And this guy runs it very well. Mike Grow, a junior out of Randolph, New Jersey. And he is the ACC's leading passer. He certainly is. He's doing a really nice job running this Virginia attack. They like what he's doing. He doesn't make mistakes out there. He has not been intercepted. And they've only uh, sacked him. They haven't sacked him at all this year, as a matter of fact. Their offensive line gave him a lot of protection. Play action to Brooks on first down. And a completion to Tyrone Davis. And a big first down. Jimmy Hitchcock made the tackle in the secondary after a 31-yard gain to Davis. Take a look from the end zone. You see Mike Grow a little misdirection play. He rolls back. Davis is going to be running the out pattern. Throws the ball. No pressure there. Wide open Tyrone coming across the field. He's a big receiver. Defensive backs, they don't want to have to tackle that guy. He's 6'2", uh, excuse me, 6'4", 225. Here goes the tailback, Brooks. And Kevin, who got the start today, gets it right to midfield for a gain of about four. Tiki Barber had been doing most of the ball carrying. The ball of the load here by Virginia is going to be run by Kevin Brooks at tailback. And Tyrone Davis, we just saw the big reception there. Those guys are the heart of this offensive unit from Virginia. Offensively, they're anchored at center by Brian Heath, the only senior on the, on the line. He's a very steady guy that they like up there to make all the situation changes. On second down, Tiki Barber, number 21, is in at tailback for Virginia. And Barber has it. Makes one guy miss and then is shoved back as he got about to the Carolina 47. 18 Jimmy Hitchcock on the stop along with 28 Sean Boyd the strong safety. The strength of this North Carolina defense is up front there Mar is Marcus Jones and Oscar Sturgis. Two defensive ends that are great rushing the passer. They also do a very good job against the run as well. Defensive in the backfield we have Jimmy Hitchcock at cornerback. Very good player. Potential NFL prospect down the road. It is third down. And about five yards to go. The ball at the Carolina 49. And timeout called by Virginia as Mike Grove came up to the line. He may not have liked what he saw on the North Carolina defense. We'll take a timeout with 13.30 to go in the first and no score. Third and six, the ball still at the Carolina 49. Virginia with the opening possession. You can see that they've been about average on third down conversions this year. 
little pitch to the tailback Kevin Brooks he has a blocker he has a first down run out of bounds by 28 Sean Boyd nice change of pace there by the Virginia offense you might think they'd pass here at third and six but they take a quick pitch to the outside look at the big tackle Chris Harrison out front he gets a key block Brooks has his way down the sideline they're pushing him out of bounds good call on third down by these by the Virginia Cavaliers and there's Kevin out of Chesapeake Virginia who gained 14 yards on the play option in a reverse Tyrone Davis North Carolina waiting for him fuzzy Lee number 47 there along with big number 56 Greg Black not really atypical for Virginia to run a defense but run the reverse Tyrone's run five this year already you see grow a little misdirection and Davis is going to come back to us he takes the pitch they've got blockers out front they didn't really do a good job for him there otherwise Davis might have had some room to run down the field he did pick up three yards it's second and seven from the 33 and a shovel pass to Kevin Brooks inside the 20 inside the 15 Eddie Mason 37 and free safety Eric Thomas number 38 brought Brooks down or he might have gone all the way watch Virginia here from the end zone you see the guard pull around he's going to get the block on the linebacker gets in there Brooks has open lane running right there great call by the Cavaliers take another look here you see the guard on the side there block on the linebacker Brooks puts his head down he's a good tough runner they're glad to have him back in the lineup this week Brooks 5'11 195 and now they go back with a three wide receiver set first down Charles Wade the fullback powering for about five a penalty flag thrown on the snap however as Wade got down to about the 10 but flags are down by both the line judge and linesman a little hard count there by Mike uh, Grow. I think they got Riddick Parker in the neutral zone. They did. Mike Dover is our referee in the preliminary indication offside Carolina. Yeah, there's Riddick. He steps into the neutral zone. Mike's got the ball. Can't do that. So that will move the ball to the five, which is where Charles Way had moved it himself. But now it's first down, five yards to go. Virginia, so down, Virginia down here, they like to get... Davis single up on the outside. They also like Jeffers down here on the outside. And as you can see, they've done very well in the red zone or inside the opponent's 20. Charles Way again. Only a couple to about the eight grabbed by Riddick Parker, number 97. Parker, a senior from Murfreesboro, North Carolina. Take a look at what these guys are doing this year. Virginia's averaging about 400 yards total offense. North Carolina's giving up 328 yards on defense. Nothing really remarkable. Virginia has a little better rushing attack than what UNC is giving up on defense. And they're moving the ball very well here in their opening possession. It is second down and three. Charles Way will hit it again. He's close to the five, which is where he needs to get for the first down. Charles Way, the real leader back there, a senior, 6'2", 225, out of Philadelphia. Stopped that time by Mike Morton, number 58, who is North Carolina's leading tackler at linebacker. And Charles Way is one of the tri-captains on, on his Virginia team. They're not afraid to give him the ball as much as they will Brooks or, or Barber in the backfield. Third down and about a half a yard to go. And Groves tried to sneak it for himself. Did get it across the five, which is what he needed to do. And it is first and goal. Look at the Virginia offensive line surge. Mike Groves just takes it right over the top, straight ahead. Nice, secure play. Gets the first down. George Welch came out with a little different wrinkle here to open the game. A little more of a three wide receiver package, which is on the field right now. They got one back in the backfield. That's way. First and goal at the four. Charles Way has it, but he will maybe get a yard before he's thrown back. Marcus Jones, number 71, leading the defensive charge for the Tar Heels. 
And they need Marcus Jones to step up and have a big day today. He's a, he's a potential first-round draft pick in the NFL. He's got all the size, all the tools. They need him to come up big, on, especially on this goal line series. If these guys can stop him, get a field goal here, they'll feel like they've done, you know, held him to something worthwhile on defense. It is second and goal. Ball at about the three and a half. This is the 11th play of this drive. Now from the I formation. Fake to Brooks. Grove trying to follow him in. Standing in his way was Jimmy Hitchcock, who made him turn up field, and then Eddie Mason, number 37, made the tackle. Maybe a broken play by Grove. I think he's going to hand it to Brooks here. We got a good lead block by Way on the on the, on the linebacker. Doesn't make the handoff. A little wide there by Brooks. So Grove has to take it up and get see what he can get. Either Brooks went left and he was supposed to go right, or Grove thought he was going right and he was going the right direction. Now it is third and goal, and the ball about two yards away from the goal line. tripped up and again Marcus Jones number 71 got through very quickly and grabbed his feet penetration is what stopped that play the Carolina defensive line got excellent penetration you'll see grow here he steps to the right look at his feet underneath the pile they're coming through and there's Marcus Jones and Mike Grow is shaken up limping as he comes off the field on to attempt the field goal is Rafael Garcia. It will be a 22 yard attempt. And it's good. Garcia, originally from Barcelona, Spain, knocks it through, and it's three to nothing, Virginia, in the first quarter. Beautiful home, Monticello, Thomas Jefferson's magnificent and very well-designed residence. The backdrop for those billboards for you. What a scoring drive, and they ate up almost seven minutes, Gary. Very good play selection, I think, by Virginia that time. They passed the ball down the field to, uh, to Davis, ran the ball effectively. A little misdirection inside. Good way to start against this North Carolina defense. Rafael Garcia, who kicked the field goal, will kick it off. And Marcus Wall is deep. Number 14 takes it at the four. Still fighting up to about the 23 or 24. Paul London, number five, brought him down for the Cavaliers. And here is Jason Stanisek. This is one tough kid right here, and he holds already almost all of North Carolina's school passing records. They really like him. He's a leader on the field. He has a lot of experience, smooth operation. What they really like him about him is he makes good decisions on the field. He doesn't make many errors. Malcolm Marshall and Curtis Johnson in the backfield behind Stanisek after the 20-yard kickoff return by Wall. Stanisek maybe changing the play. The pass on first down incomplete. Intended for Marcus Wall, but short of the mark. This offense, we talked about Johnson, and Johnson's a tailback. Malcolm Marshall is a complete fullback. He runs the ball real well, but what is really impressive about him is he's an excellent blocker. We'll also see William Henderson at fullback. They both do a good job. They'll be alternating in and out. Offensive line, it's a young group. They have no returners from last year. They're starting to come together. Don Meredith at center anchors that offensive line. Second and 10. Carolina still at their own 24. Stanisek to throw again. And he completes it to the tight end, Greg DeLong. Out to about the 33. Rondé Barber, number 19, made the tackle. You talk about this Virginia defense, you talk about their linebackers. Great speed. Randy Neal, one of the tri captains here on the team. Excellent player. They like him out there. He's a leader. He's vocal. He does everything you ask for. Player just made the tackle there, Rondé Barber. He's a redshirt freshman. Playing very well this year. Has five interceptions. They look for a lot of things from Rondé today. Third and six. On the option. 
Stanisek, Randy Neal wraps him up. That's the kind of impact that Randy Neal can have on this ball game. Big play inside linebacker. Take a look at the end from the end zone. Randy Neal will be on the left side of your screen, number six. He steps up into play. He reads the option all the way. His speed comes in there, grabs Stanisek. Big loss on the play. A loss of four. So Mike Thomas on to punt. Percy Ellsworth, number 27, back for Virginia. And a short kick that Ellsworth will let bounce. It takes a Virginia bounce and is down at the, at the Virginia 45. Kiva Suma Mays, number 53, down there to Dowdle. Virginia with the lead and good field position. Virginia leading three to nothing and they have scored not only in each of their games this season first but they've now scored in 123 consecutive games for a school record Kevin Brooks with a swing pass run out of bounds or knocked down really prior to going out of bounds by Jimmy Hitchcock number 18 Hitchcock earlier playing with a hard cast now he's got kind of a softer version of it on his right forearm. This is what the Carolina defensive backs put on their wrists before the game. They're rude boys. That's what their, their trademark is. The reason they do this, they put it out there, let the guys know, hey, we are rude. We're going to rough you up. But what they have on the underside, the guys who are injured on the defensive backs that aren't out there, I recognize those guys that way. Brooks for a short gain of one or two to midfield. Marcus Jones, 71, again on the tackle for Carolina. And we have a candidate, it is Marcus Jones, who was shaken up on the play after making the stop. Marcus is the leader out on this field. They need him to come up big in this ball game. He's not able to continue. It's gonna, it's gonna really hurt this North Carolina defense. Jones is a senior, a junior brother, junior from Jacksonville, North Carolina. Jones will take a seat. Replaced by Greg Ellis, a redshirt freshman, number 87. Third down and four. Grohl swings it out to Charles Way, hit immediately by Hitchcock. Well, Jimmy's been all over that defensive backfield for Carolina so far, and Way will be stopped short of the first down. Play was slow in developing. Hitchcock read it well, got up there, made a nice tackle on May. Take a look from the end zone. This is a third look for Mike Groh. He's going all the way one, two, comes back outside to the third receiver. Way is there. Hitchcock comes up. It's a good low tackle on a big fullback. So that'll bring on Will Bryce, the punter who's averaging over 40 yards a kick. Octavis Barnes, number four, the deep man for Carolina, watches it go out of bounds. And it'll be marked near the 20. And that's where Carolina will go on offense again. A punt of 31 yards. And Mike Bro and Virginia leading three to nothing here in the first quarter. As always, we'll bring you up to date with the ABC Sports Board of all the scores going on around the country. And some games have been completed. All the top 25 will run down for you regularly. Ole Miss leading Alabama early. Malcolm Marshall and Curtis Johnson again in the backfield behind Stanisek. Malcolm Marshall going nowhere. Again, tremendous penetration by the front four for Virginia. Todd White, number 91, and 95, Mike Frederick leading the charge. Very interesting matchup right here. The North Carolina offense on, uh, uh, averaging 247 yards on the ground. Look at Virginia's defense. They're only giving up 54 yards. That leads the nation. It's going to be a good contest today against this running offense and this rushing defense. Malcolm Marshall lost a yard in his second and 11, and we heard that Marcus Jones for Carolina just shaken up. He will return to the game. Curtis Johnson across the 20 to about the 22. Jamie Sharper, number 33, the leading tackler for Virginia, made the stop. Texas A&M leading Rice in the third after Rice upset Texas last Sunday. No score yet, Washington at Oregon. And there's that Florida State final. Third down and six. Leon Johnson now replaces Curtis Johnson in the backfield. And 
Randy Neal was shaken up a little bit for Virginia and he's coming off. He's had a sore knee all year. He hurt it in the first game against Florida State. And looks like he's given a little bit on that left knee. Hopefully they'll get him back in the lineup. He is their main player on defense. So another big third down for Stanisek and Carolina. Swings it out to Leon Johnson. Nothing but bright blue shirts out there. James Ferrier, number 42 with the stop. Again, Carolina will have three and out. Good job by this Virginia defense. James Ferrier has excellent speed. They really like what he can do. He's a 4-5 linebacker, gets out there, makes a nice play on the outside. So Mike Thomas on to punt. 27, Percy Ellison drops back for the Cavaliers. Ellison standing at his 35. And again, not a good punt. Thomas usually much better, averaging over 42 yards a kick. Again, tremendous field position for George Welsh and the Cavaliers. They started their own 46. Throw looking long. Tyrone Davis has a step. Down inside the five. Fuzzy Lee trying to cover Tyrone Davis. And the big man picks up a gain of 49 yards. Great execution by the Virginia offense. Play fake in there. They've got Davis on the outside singled up. His height, his speed, his size makes it difficult for any cornerback to bring this big guy down. They mark the ball right on the five-yard line where it is again first and goal Virginia. Kevin Brooks may have turned the wrong way again and Grohl had a face mask as he was hammered at the line of scrimmage. It looked like Eddie Mason number 37 inadvertently grabbed a hold. I don't think it was a flagrant call but that's not for us to decide necessarily anyway. Twice now down here about to score Brooks has turned the wrong way or made the, the wrong step. Let's take a look at it here Brooks he's going to step to his left Grow is out here to the right side he may have thought it was a counter play. He's not in sync with the quarterback Grow's coming along. We'll see Mason come into the picture here grabs a face mask. Good call by the referee yeah, and Mason took his hands off immediately when he knew he did it. It really doesn't make a whole lot of difference. It's going to be half the distance of the goal in any event and the ball at the two and a half now still first and goal. Charles Wade tripped a little bit as he hit the line of scrimmage grabbed around the ankles by 44 John Bradley who sliced in from defensive end James Hamilton 54 met him in the hole. This North Carolina defense playing good goal line defense early. They stopped him the last time down here for a field goal. Now it's second down and goal. Let's see what they're going to do here. Final two minutes of the first quarter. The ball at the two. Way the long setback. Throw to pass. Touchdown, Tyrone Davis. receiver like Tyrone Davis on the outside you're going to try to give him the ball down in the end zone the red area that's exactly what Virginia did that time nice strike by Mike Grove Mike Grove is six for six so far as the extra point is good Rafael Garcia is 21 or 20 of 20 on the year kicking extra points and Virginia now with a 10 to nothing lead you see Mike Rowe here. He's going to find Davis all the way. He looks to his left, out to the right. He's got Davis singled up. All he does is a little spin route, brings it inside, back out. Davis is in front of the cornerback. Now from the end zone, you take a look here at, at Tyrone. He fakes inside. He spins back. The cornerback is giving him way too much leadway here. He's got to be up in front of this man. Great throw by Rowe right where it needs to be. Happy young man right there, Mike Rowe. 
Having a big day here. What do you say? Six of six, Steve? Seven of seven? Six of six so far, including the touchdown. He's thrown for over 100 yards here in the first quarter already. George Walsh takes a, a good earned drink right there after that drive. That drive, just three plays. Of course, the big pass to Tyrone Davis to get them down at the five. 54 yards and a minute 28 to take a 10 to nothing lead. A couple NFL scouts here today. I saw them in the press box. They're looking at Tyrone Davis. They think he's a quality player, a big guy, big receiver, guy that can make an impact on a football team. Well, there's an NFL assistant coach here, too. And that's Al Grove, Mike Grove's dad. Yes, I know Al very well. I know Mike my days with the Giants, and Al was our defense coordinator, linebacker coach there. He's here joining the game. The Patriots have a bye week as we set out and set to kick off. Garcia, and it is Marcus Wall from the five. He's got a blocker and an opening, but he goes down at the 40. Tripped up by Rondé Barber, number 19. A 36-yard kickoff return by Marcus Wall. That game getting close to the end in the ACC with Duke remaining undefeated. So far, this Virginia defense has done very well stopping this North Carolina offensive attack. Now we've got William Henderson in at fullback and Leon Johnson at tailback behind Stanisek. Carolina's first or rather best field position so far. Stanisek going long. And he had Octavius Barnes open but overthrew him. Percy Ellsworth, the safety, was beaten on the play. But Stanisek overthrew Barnes. Obviously a miscommunication in the secondary. Rondé Barber is on the cornerback on the on the far side of the field. You see Stanisek, he looks down the field. He's amazed. He has a wide open receiver. No one is within 15 yards of him. He'd like to have that throw back. But it is second and ten. Still back at the Carolina 40. Leon Johnson trying to get outside and run out of bounds after a very short game. Jamie Sharper, number 33, and Joe Crocker, number four, over there quickly. Unfortunately, Randy Neal is not back in the lineup at middle linebacker. They've got Skeet Jones in there, number 32. The defense coordinator Rick Lance told me he thought that he felt like Skeet Jones was a fourth starting linebacker, so he feels very comfortable with him in the lineup. He gained three. It's third and seven. Play action. Stanisek with time, but nobody open. Knocked down by Jamie Sharper. Excellent. What a job the Virginia defense is doing. They are doing a tremendous job. These linebackers are very active. Ferrier, you see Sharp there from the end zone. We'll take a look at this. You see Stanisek, he's looking, he's looking. He finds nobody there. A little play action. Good job. The coverage is there. They've got everybody. He's just trying to find a hole. He's going to throw it out there to the flat. Sharper makes a good play. North Carolina has gained just 12 yards so far as Mike Thomas punts to Percy Ellsworth again. Ellsworth fair catching it at about the 18. We've got a minute 22 left to go in the first quarter. A 40 yard punt by Thomas more the norm than his first couple of efforts. Virginia with a 10 to nothing lead and they will go back on offense in their own territory. Miami leading West Virginia and Virginia Tech big over Pittsburgh. That's a final. George Welsh has to be very happy with what his Virginia team has done so far defensively as well as offensively. They've moved the ball efficiently. They've done a good job holding North Carolina's offensive in check. Kevin Brooks nowhere to run that time as the Carolina defensive line was waiting for him. Bonnie Holiday, number 90, a freshman. True freshman from Camden, South Carolina, right in the hole. Maybe a gain of about a half yard. The ball close to the 19, where it's second down, about nine and a half to go. Brooks looking for an opening. And getting it out across the 25. Ball popped out, but caused by the ground. Good job by Brooks to make something out of nothing. 
blocker fell down in front of him. He kind of screened two of the defenders outside. Take a look here from the inside. You see Brooks come around the line. The guard falls inside. Defenders fall down to the ground. Brooks just takes it right up the field. Good north-south running. And you saw Carolina's number 57, Terry Mock, in the game. He has a dislocated elbow. We didn't know whether he'd play or not. Brooks on the shovel pass. And a play works again for a first down to the 39. Eric Thomas, number 38 and 28. Sean Boyd, the two safeties, have to make the tackle. It's a gain of 14. Execution, execution. That's what this Virginia offense is doing right now. Roll to the right by Grow. He shovels it inside. Good blocking inside by 64. The safeties are having to make too many tackles for this North Carolina defense. That's the end of the first quarter. They are loving it here in Scott Stadium. This is their rivalry, and they lead 10 to nothing. We're in Charlottesville, Virginia. Steve Zabriskie along with Gary Reasons, where Virginia has not allowed a point in the first quarter this season and leads 10 to nothing as we start the second quarter. Mike Grohl with play action. Flips it to Charles Way, and Way has a first down before Kerry Mock bumps him out of bounds. Awesome. Thank you, John. On first down. Charles Way with a gain of about five and here's what happened in the first quarter not much for North Carolina I'll tell you complete dominance by his Virginia football team yardage time of possession everything's going their way for the Cavaliers Mike Grove has taken it to him came into the game with 66 completion percentage he's been perfect Kevin Brooks tripped up as he gets to the 40, and again, Marcus Jones, who's back in the game, makes the big play, number 71. Really impressive what this Virginia offense is doing. Good play selection. They're mixing things up a lot. Way is having a big day there. You take a look at Marcus Jones, the defensive end who made the tackle there. Good to see him back in the lineup for North Carolina because they're going to need his efforts. He's got to turn this defense around. It is third and four, Virginia at the North Carolina 40. Flips it and completes it to Patrick Jeffers, who has the first down. Jeffers, a walk-on, who is now a junior. He's out of Fort Worth, Texas. Sean Boyd, the strong safety with the tackle. Mike Grohl is making some good decisions. He's buying time in the pocket. Offensive line is giving him a lot of protection. He moves around. He's got crosses in front of him. He thought he was going to have Davis. Looks over to Jeffers, finds him wide open. Good catch right there. It shows a lot of poise by a young quarterback to be able to look to his third receiver. Great numbers, nine completions out of nine attempts, 139 yards, the touchdown. The man is having a good day here. It's pretty much... This is a... He wants a timeout here, however. We'll be back. Mike Rowe being watched by his parents. There's Al Groh, the defense quarter now for the New England Patriots. And his mother standing up taking a picture. Her name is Ann. They came down. They've got a bye week this week. And Al has got to be very proud of what his son Mike Groh is doing today. And there's his first incompletion as he intended it for Patrick Jeffers. But Sean Boyd, 28, made a good play and had Jeffers well covered. So Groh now 9 of 10 passing. It'll be second and 10. Mike Groh is a nice story. Here he is on the pass on the outside. He's a hometown guy here from Charleston, Virginia. He was born here. Al was on the defensive staff here. It's the first year as a quarter. That ball was right on the money. Just got to catch that ball. The ball still at the Carolina 32. Virginia leading 10 to nothing. Kevin Brooks breaks a tackle. Down near the 25. He'll be about three yards short of the first down. Tackled by number 80, Oscar Sturgis, a defensive end and a senior from Hamlet, North Carolina. It'll be third and about three. Good blocking by the Virginia offense. The fullbacks are blocking very well. The interior linemen are getting hats on hats. They're moving people around, giving Kevin Brooks an opportunity to make some yardage. Brooks has carried seven times for 33 yards so far. it again close to the first down 
It'll depend on the spot. Greg Black, number 56 at 290 pounds, made the tackle. Greg Black used to weigh a lot more than 290 pounds. Yeah, unfortunately, last year towards the end of the season, after a 10 and 3 season, he felt like himself. He didn't play very well. He kind of sat in his room all winter and bloomed up over 300 pounds, 325 pounds. Felt pretty bad about himself. And luckily, he got to work with the strength coach and there and got his weight back down, got ready back for, for fall practice. And nice trim, 275 pounds. So <laughs> they're happy to have him back in shape. Just that much short of the first down. It'll be fourth and about six inches to go. This season, Virginia has gone for it on fourth down four times. They have made it three of the four attempts. It's going to be a real test here for the North Carolina defense. If they can stop this Virginia team right now, they may have a little momentum swing here early in the second quarter. And that's exactly what they need as Mac Brown watches. He wants his defense to come up big on this play. North Carolina has been able to get any momentum going so far today. This could be a turn if they could stop Virginia on fourth and inches. Twelve minutes to go in the second quarter. The ball at the Carolina 23. Grow knocked backwards. It will solely depend on how much forward progress they give him. I'll tell you when it comes to short yardage, Marcus Jones is coming up big. He's getting underneath people, getting over people. He hit, he hit Mike Rowe there. I don't think he was real happy with that contact. That was helmet to helmet, and it's close enough that they're going to measure it again. Take a look at it here. You see Grove jump over the top. Jones is there, the linebacker over the top. Couldn't see the number. Look like Eddie Mason, possibly. Yeah, that's Mason in the middle. He comes up. Good hit on Grow, forcing him back. It is a first down, however. Not by much, but enough. So far, Virginia has controlled the ball for 14 and a half minutes. North Carolina for three and a half minutes. Yeah, this drive is going very well. 11 plays, 60 yards. Good efficient use of the clock. Good play selection. Tiki Barber in motion. Rowe trying to throw back, and he is smothered. Big number 94, Rick Terry, at 290 pounds, a sophomore out of Lexington, North Carolina. Well, Rowe took that one for the team. He made a really good decision. They had a wide receiver screen set up outside to Davis. We'll take a look at it here. Mikey looks to the right. He's going to throw back to the left on the screen. Oh, the guy's covered. Too late. He's got pressure on him. Good play there inside. And a loss of six. It's second and 16. Back at the 28. Play action. Grove completing it. Bobby Neely, the tight end, pushed backward and out of bounds by linebacker Eddie Mason, number 37. Mason showing that he's ready to make some contact today on the short yardage play. Gets out there and hits big Bobby Neely. See what kind of coverage ability that Neely, uh, that Mason has here. He goes all the way out to the flat. Good open field tackle on a big tight end. A gain of only four on the play, so it is third and 12. Virginia at the Carolina 24. Rowe sliding down short of the first down, but he got the ball right in the middle of the field at about the 18. Eddie Mason and Riddick Parker, 97, drag him down there. I think George Welsh is probably happy with the decision that Mike Rowe made there. North Carolina defense did a very good job as co covering the receivers. And a penalty against North Carolina. Looked like unsportsmanlike conduct. I don't know uh, what there, they're referring to there. There, were, there was no flag during the play, but let's listen to Mike Dover. Yep. Well, I can't hear him, but it is after the play, and it will give Virginia first down. Take a look at the officials there. He's throwing the flag before the play. It might be. I think they had too many guys on the field. It's possibly what it was, Steve. Illegal participation. Twelve men on the field, possibly. And yeah, we couldn't hear the referee's call, so 
A ball at the 12 after the penalty and a first down for Virginia. Cavaliers retain possession. Play action. Throw rolling away. Now he's going to run it. Bumped out of bounds by Sean Boyd. I tell you what, he is a cool customer, isn't he? Mike Rose, not a big runner up to date, but today he's running the ball effectively. He's making a good decision, as I've said. Look at Hitchcock. He's got good coverage here on Jeffers through the end zone. That's where Mike Rowe is looking. Rather than throw it in there, he pulls it down and runs it with the ball. Good coverage by Hitchcock. Second down and two, but the ball is at the four. Kevin Brooks. Touchdown. No. The ball may have come loose, Steve. No signal yet. Right. It's a first and goal at about the one foot line. Brooks thought he was in. Greg Ellis, number 87, and Mike Morton, number 58, met him there. Brooks takes off like a rocket that opens up inside for him. Watch me run straight ahead here. See what his forward progress looks like. Good open field tackle there. Good job by 87. He didn't get the nose of the ball across the plane of the goal line. I think Mike Morton was right in the middle then. So it is first and goal, inches away. Brooks again. <laughs> A penalty flag is down, however, as Brooks takes it in this time. But the linesman dropped the flag right after the snap. Offsides on the defense. It is a touchdown for Virginia and Kevin Brooks. Take a look at the touchdown here from the sideline. You see the North Carolina defense a little early there getting into the neutral zone. Touchdown, Virginia. Rafael Garcia on for yet another extra point. 21 of 21 on the year for Garcia. Virginia with 9-18 to go in the first half has controlled things both sides of the ball. 17-0. Well, there's a pretty impressive scoring drive and another seven minutes off the clock for Virginia as they go 82 yards this time. Nice blend of rushes and passes and Brooks with a one-yard touchdown. Very efficient on the Virginia offense. Garcia to kick Marcus Wall 14 who's done a good job for Carolina running him back. We'll take this one one yard deep. Nice opening. Nice move out to the 40 brought down by Rafael Garcia the kicker after a 40 yard kickoff return. Marcus Wall a junior. <laughs> Kickers don't Garcia like to make tackles. holding his back a little bit. That's not the norm. Marcus stays in the game at wide receiver and again a little better field position for Carolina each time. Time of possession is way one side of Virginia. North Carolina has to string a few plays together to give that defense a rest. William Henderson and Leon Johnson in the backfield behind Stanisek. Leon. Gains about three out to about the 43. Led through there by Raj Perguson, number 76, the big 6'6 tackle. James Ferrier, 42 on the stop, along with Dwayne Ashman, number 94. So we take a look at Mac Brown. I talked to him yesterday. I said, what's going to happen if things get out of hand or a little different? He said, last year they got away from their game plan. Don't expect them to do that now. As you see them here, they're still in the eye formation. They're going to do what works for them, and that's running the football. Henderson's first carry. He busts through a big hole. William Henderson inside the 20, inside the 10, inside the 5. Joe Crocker hauls him down. When you've got a big fullback running down the field, these cornerbacks aren't used to bringing those big guys down and running and catching them from behind. As you see here, the big splits by the offensive line. Good opening there, good surge. Runner in the open field, showing he has some speed. And look at Crocker come all the way from the opposite side of the field. Very impressive run here by the fullback. He just darts right through the hole, missed tackle at the line of scrimmage, and he's off to the races. 
245 pounds a runaway locomotive right there a 54 yard run it's first and goal Carolina Leon Johnson trying to break a tackle he was hit first by Sharper and then Percy Ellsworth the safety 27 finished him off nice job by Ellsworth coming up there this is exactly what North Carolina's offense needs get down here get on the point get some points on the board take a look at it here you'll see the run Johnson cuts to his right missed tackle in the backfield and Ellsworth makes a nice hit in the open field prior to William Henderson's 54 yard run Carolina had gained 11 yards that will help the stats not helping the points yet second and goal Henderson touchdown William Harrison bangs it in from two yards out and Carolina with 722 to go in the second quarter this is a shot in the arm for the North Carolina offense good good blocking at the point of attack shoulders get turned he gets going upfield across the end line two big fullbacks here for this North Carolina offense they're able to move the football Trip Pignetti on to attempt the extra point. He's 21 of 22 on the year. And he is now 22 out of 23. Virginia had held their opponents without a touchdown in 16 quarters till this two yard run by Henderson. A little of the autumnal splendor here behind Duke's big win over Wake Forest as the Blue Devils remain undefeated. Obviously, they're going into the toughest part of their season the last four games. So with that update, here are now of the moment the ACC standings with Florida State and Duke unbeaten in the conference. Duke unbeaten overall. NC State unbeaten in the conference. And Virginia and North Carolina slugging it out here. Both having a loss, each loss to Florida State. Well, that was a quick one, less than two minutes, and a big 54-yard run by William Harrison, whose previous longest run of the year had been 17 yards. Good drive there by North Carolina, get some points on the board. Defense has to come out and try to do something to shut this Virginia offense down. There's Demetrius Allen and Rondé Barber, the receivers. Scott Caparelli to kick it off. Short kick, Demetrius Allen from the 15. Trying to get outside, but he cannot. Well, Mike Groves had a heck of a day so far. Daryl Medley, number 34, is into the game at fullback, and Tiki Barber, 21 at tailback now. A new running back tandem for Virginia on first down. Barber, not much room as he gets a couple out near the 30. Wrapped up by Eddie Mason, who got a hold of his ankle. Steve McNair and Alcorn State trailing Southern by three in the fourth quarter. McNair, however, having his usual day at the office. Penn continues to be by far the class of the Ivy League. Charles Way, number 30, now back into the game at fullback for Virginia. From the shotgun. Throw under pressure, gets it away, incomplete. It was intended for Demetrius Allen, but Riddick Parker, number 97, gave Grove some kind of shot just as he got it off. Yeah, he had Allen open on the outside. He did a little comeback route, got that ball away from him a little bit, got up and high. You see Grove looking right down to him. He's got pressure. He can't follow through. That's why the ball is a little high to Allen. Just a little bit more, and Allen may have come down with that, that catch in, in bounds. Third down, seven, three wideouts in the game, and again the shotgun. Throw long over the middle, incomplete. Tyrone Davis had it and couldn't hold on. Sean Boyd, 28, was running with him. You won't see the big guy drop very many of those. He's used to coming across the middle. I've seen the film on this guy. He's, he's very impressive coming across the middle. Big, big target coming in there. Grove throws it right where he needs to. He leads the receiver out front. He gets inside. You'll see it there. 
Maybe a little high, but still a very catchable pass. So Will Bryce on to punt it away, and Octavius Barnes, number four, standing back inside his 25 for Carolina. A left-footed boomer. Barnes drifting back, drops the ball inside the 15. It's in the end zone. Carolina has it. Carolina has it. A 54-yard punt, and Virginia had two guys that could have recovered it but North Carolina came up with the football it's a muff punt you'll see him there he's trying to get back to get on top of it it goes into the end zone watch Allen here I think he had a shot at it but he loses it North Carolina defenders come on field and it's a touchback the impetus of the ball what brought it into the end zone it's not a safety it's a touchback and obviously could have been a touchdown. Ronald Thomas, I think, number 42 for, for North Carolina, took that ball away from whoever the Virginia player was that had the ball in his arms initially. It winds up being about a 70-yard kick with the muff. You know, we have a left-footed punter here. It's a little different. The ball comes down. It spins a little bit differently. I think that might have been his trouble with it. Now you see him here at the end. Allen's trying to get the football. Looks like he has it to me, and it gets away from him. Carolina comes up with it. Could have been a very, very costly mistake by the North Carolina returner. Yeah, Ronald Thomas, a sophomore from Patterson, New Jersey, number 42, got the recovery for the touchback. 6-17 to go in the first half. Virginia leading by 10, and we'll be back. After the month punt and the touchback, as it was recovered in the end zone by Carolina, they had a First down at the 20, trailing by 10. We're midway through the second quarter. Stanisek on the option. Tries to cut it up, and he will gain only two or three. Good swarming job by the Virginia defense. Take the option away. North Carolina is trying to spread the formation out a little bit. They walk the tight end out into the slot. They're trying to get six people in the box with Virginia's defense. Try to run the football. Didn't happen there. Good play by the Virginia defense. And Mike Frederick, number 95, one of the leaders there, stringing that play out nicely. Got a little help from Randy Neal from the inside. Second and seven. Play action, option this side, pitch back, Curtis Johnson. And what a play by number 19, Rondé Barber, who was being blocked, shed the blocker and kept Curtis Johnson from gaining much yardage at all. Bishop. Take a look at the outside linebacker, Farrier here. He comes up, he forces the pitch. Right there on top of Stanisek, Rondé Barber does an excellent job here. That's what coaches like to see. They like to see players that can get off of blocks, make things happen. In the open field, Rondé Barber, a redshirt freshman, good play on the outside. So now it is third and eight as he actually lost a yard. Over the middle, complete to Octavius Barnes, who makes a fine sliding catch for a first down at the 36, covered by number five, Paul London. First chance you've had to see Stanisek throw the ball down the field. He has an in cut right there. Gain of 15. Plenty of time to throw the ball back here. He's got a chance to look around. No pressure to speak of. You see the crossing receiver there. Good throw. A little bit behind. Good concentration by Barnes. The ball just outside the Carolina 36. Stanisek completing it to the tight end. Greg DeLong, who's thrown out of bounds. 47, Carl Smith. Coming up quickly. I think Stanisek is finally getting comfortable out there. He is, they have a check with me package, which means they have two plays called at the line in the huddle. They go there, and he looks at the formation. He's smart enough, he's seen enough defenses in his day where he can make them audible where they're gonna run the ball or throw the ball. That time he elected to throw the ball, he saw the coverage, made a good throw. I think the defense was offside, yes. 
Mike Dover's microphone is not functioning, as you may have guessed by now, since we haven't been able to bring you his calls. But the five yard markup against Virginia moves it out to the 41. And it'll be first and five. Stanisek on the option pass. Flags all over the place in the backfield. And Stanisek runs it out of bounds. He may have enough yardage for the first down as James Ferrier chases him out. But I'm afraid got a load of laundry in the backfield here. Yeah, I'm afraid of Mike Frederick kind of got tackled back there. There were three guys on top of him. Mike has his left defensive end position. He has to contain the quarterback and keep him inside. Obviously, he was brought down. That's what gave Stanisek the room outside. Can't tackle those big defensive linemen. That referee's looking for that back there. Look at the hands right there. He's got the jersey, pulls him down. They cut him there. Good call by the referees. Stanisek may have had enough for the first down, but it is negated by the penalty that moves the ball back inside the 25. Now it's first down and about 23 yards to go. Coming up at halftime, the Prudential Halftime Report. John Saunders along. Terry Bowden and Bill McCartney are going to talk about the national championship picture as well. Stanisek rolling, throwing incomplete. There was a collision between Rondé Barber and Octavius Barnes downfield. No flag, however. And it'll be second down. Rondé Barber is really a treat to watch on defense. He's got excellent footwork, excellent speed. He's a world-class runner on this Georgia track team. Excuse me, on Virginia track team. The receiver just falls down. The barber had tripped over him. The ball might have been an interception. Barnes trying to make a nifty move. But the turf got in the way. Second and 22. Again, they give it to the fullback, Henderson, and he bangs out to the 31 for a gain of about six, wrapped up by number six, Randy Neal. Same situation, same play where they had a while ago when he broke open for a long run. Trying to spread that Virginia defense out a little bit, see if they can open the holes in there, get the fullback to run down the field, and Henderson has shown he can run, that's for sure. Henderson out of the game. It is third down and 16. Look at the splits here. If he just gets his feet up, has a chance, he trips over his own guard. Otherwise, he may have had some good yardage. Leon Johnson, the lone setback on third down. Stanisek under pressure gets away. Johnson has it. Johnson has the first down. Still going. Down to the 31 of Virginia. Nice poise that time by Stanisek. Poor tackling by Virginia's defense. They had him in the backfield and downfield on the, on the catch. Missed tackles. Watch him here. He drops back in the pocket. They've got good pressure. Inside there, missed tackle, missed tackle. Just pops the ball outside. Runs down here. Now watch the open field missed tackles. One, two, three. There Runs right through Rondé Barber. Rondé has to put a hat on him right there. Farrier runs down and makes the tackle. I think Rondé thought he was down, and he stopped. Big gain of 38 and a first down. Stanisek running the option pass again. Looking deep in the end zone. Intercepted. Picked off by Rondé Barber. His sixth interception of the year. Well, if you're going to miss a big open field tackle like that, there's nothing better than to come back with an interception. Rondé shows that he has the ability to cover a lot of ground out there, and Stanisek can't be pleased with that pass. That is the 11th consecutive game in which Virginia has picked off a pass. I think Stanisek kind of forced that ball. Rondé's just kind of playing center field back there, made a good catch. Take a look at him here, pressure in his face, throws it up. A little wobbly on the ball, wasn't even close to the receiver. Rondé, nobody around him for five yards. Well, they're marking the ball at the one yard line. And they're saying that Barber intercepted it at the one, and they're not bringing it out as a touchback. I don't know. He did touch the ball at the one, but you got to allow for some momentum here. A 
travel bang it out. Take a look here where Rondé catches the ball. He catches it. His one foot is in the field of play, and he runs into the end zone. It's a judgment call by the referee. Places the ball to one yard line. The reality is just as good as a punt. That maxes Virginia offense up, although North Carolina was moving the football. North Carolina now calling timeout with two minutes, five seconds remaining in the half. And that play, yeah, having gained only one yard, will bring up second and nine. So we'll take a break. It's a 10 point Virginia lead. We'll be back. George Welch, who is one of the most highly respected coaches in all of college football, has his team out to a 10 point lead. It is second and nine from about the two and a half. And again, they bang it out of there with the fullback Charles Way. He gets near the five. Wrapped up by 56 Greg Black and 58 Mike Morton. Another timeout by the Carolina defense. They think they're going to get the ball back here. Just make something happen by the end of the second quarter. They got good field position. If they can hold this Virginia offense here in check on this third down, they're going to get the ball back. Maybe an opportunity to get down, kick a field goal or something here. You see Mac Brown, he calls the plays. He's getting Hitchcock. Send the play back in. We'll take a look at Mike Groh readying for the play. Kind of atypical for this Carolina team. They've outscored most opponents this year, 55 to 13 in the second quarter. But today, Virginia has an edge of 14 to 7. As we take another look at Al Groh in the stands, he's got to be real happy about his son out there. I know he is. I've worked with that man for a long time, and we we won the championship in 1990, the Super Bowl. Mike had a chance to come to the football game, and he also his son won the state championship in New Jersey that year. So it was a big year for the Groh family. Gerald Medley in at fullback, but it's Brooks. And timeout again called by Carolina as they use their final timeout. It'll bring up fourth down. A reminder that at the conclusion of today's game, we'll be announcing the genuine Chevrolet most valuable players of the game from each team. This is the 24th year that Chevrolet, through its scholarship program, will award $1,000 donated to the general scholarship fund of each school in the name of each respective player. Carolina trying to get the ball back. There's a minute 54 left on the clock. So really there's only been nine seconds run off the clock in the last two plays. And Carolina will, although they will not have any timeouts remaining, should have some time with which to work here yeah, they've before got the end of the half. Plenty of time to work with here before the end of the half. He's got to get back, settle down, throw the ball, make some plays. Got plenty of time to get down the field, kick a field goal, something to go into half with, get something with some momentum change back their way. And one thing we talked about, Gary, at the beginning of the game was North Carolina rushing against Virginia's rushing defense. So far, George Welch's rushing defense has won that matchup. They have, except for a couple of big plays. You saw the big run by the fullback. Overall, they're doing a real nice job shutting down the option. Their linebackers run very well. This guy right here has made a difference in that big play moments ago. Left-footed punter Will Bryce. It is a little different for those returners back there. You see his average there, two punts averaging 51. The second one, 70 yards. This time, Leon Johnson, number 12, rather than Octavius Barnes, is back to receive for Carolina. Leon going to watch it bound. And he really could have and should have come up and at least called for the fair catch. He could have saved 20 yards on that play as well as some time off the clock. A 60 yard punt by Will Bryce and the kicking game really coming into play as it often does. And it's in Virginia's favor so far. Will Bryce has been a factor in field position. I tell you, drop back there, drop back there and try to catch one of those punts coming off a left footed punter is very difficult. The returner did not even want to take a look at it. You see Johnson back there, he's looking up, he's thinking, oh no, I'm not going to try that. It's moving. That thing's going. It's like a screwball in baseball. Yeah, he knows he should have gone up and caught that ball on the fly and called for the fair catch. Now they're back at the 33. Stanisek looking and under pressure gets it away but it's incomplete intended for tight end Greg DeLong. Carolina trying to move this ball down the field. They're not going to give up an opportunity here at the end of the second quarter. A little misdirection roll. A minute 
32 remaining in the half. Stanisek has completed only four of ten passes for 58 yards. He's had one picked off by Rondé Barber, Barber's sixth interception of the year. Second and ten. Flipped out to Leon Johnson. Good move by Johnson and a first down, or at least very near the mark. Run out of bounds by 47 Carl Smith. 124 remaining in the half. Good job here by the Carolina offense. All these little swing pass. He's got blockers out front. Rondé Barber comes up. He gets caught inside. Can't recover. Johnson to the sideline. Stops the clock. Virginia leading by 10. First and 10 as it is at the Carolina 43. Good protection, but good coverage also. Stanisek trying to run for some yardage and head for the sidelines. Dance is out of bounds in Virginia territory at the Cavalier 43. A gain of 14, another first down, and one minute, 11 seconds left in the half. You see Virginia here, they're running some pass rush stunts. Guys coming inside, guys coming around. All Stanisek does is step up. He eludes a tackle here, a tackle there, gets outside. He has enough speed to get outside. Farrier trying to catch him, can't get there. Good gain and out of bounds, stops the clock. Not your quintessential two-minute drill, but it's working. Carolina has moved now into Virginia territory. They still have plenty of time. Stanisek firing and completing it, and it's complete to Darren Ashford inside the 30. Trying to get on the line here. They're going to run another play. Clock stop. Yeah, that'll stop the clock. It looks like Stanisek is audible, and he's going to get into his two-minute drill here for sure. The clock did stop on the first down, but now it's running again after the gain of 15, less than a minute to go. From the 28 of Virginia. Flipped it over the middle, Leon Johnson. And Johnson thought about making something out of it, but then thought better about it and got out of bounds. Jamie Sharper, 33, right on it. 43 seconds remaining on the clock in the second quarter. Down to the 23-yard line. They've got to think, maybe we'll take a shot at the end zone. Maybe throw it in there, see if they can get some points. If not, they're, they're in room for a field goal here. It is second down. They need about five for a first down. But they only have 43 seconds to work with. No timeouts remaining for either team. Stanisek flipped it. I think it might have been touched at the line of scrimmage. The pass to nowhere. Couldn't tell whether it was Todd White or Dwayne Ashman in the front of that Virginia line who may have tipped it. 37 seconds on the clock, third down, still at the 23 of Virginia. Take a look here, see if we can see the tip. Stanislav looks to his left, he throws the ball. Uh, maybe not even tip. I, I couldn't tell if it was tipped or not. Maybe just a bad pass. Third and five. Johnson diving inside the 15. The clock will stop on the first down, but they'll have to hustle. Swing pass again to Johnson, gets outside. That's kind of like an end run for these guys. They just toss it out there to the running back. Rondé Barber out there mixing it up. Now the clock running again. Less than 25 seconds, and Stanisek spikes it to stop the clock with 23 remaining. It'll be second and 10. The ball at about the 14 of Virginia. Mac Brown calls the plays here for this offense. Stanisek gets a signal back in the huddle. We've only got 23 seconds. They've got plenty of time here to throw a couple of plays. Chances in the end zone. If not, they're certainly able to kick a field goal here. Leon 
Johnson the long setback Ashford in motion. And intended for Marcus Wall incomplete. Randy Neal blasted Stanisek just as he was ready to get rid of the ball and a penalty flag is down. No there's not a penalty flag. Mike Dover signaling something. Take a look at Stanisek rolling to his left. He's trying to find a receiver down the field. Throws it out at the flat. Neal takes a shot at him. I don't know if he uh, was in, within the rules on that one. He's got to give the quarterback a couple of steps. It was close. It was questionable. Well, Mike Dover made it a motion but didn't throw a flag. Third down and 10 from the 14. Again, Marcus Wall. Can he get out of bounds? No, he will not. And it's fourth down. They're going to try to run the field goal team on, but the clock is running. Three, two, one. They won't make it. Marcus Wall could not get out of bounds to stop the clock, and Carolina gets no points on what was otherwise an impressive two-minute drive. Pure speed here by Rondé Barber. Watch him as he accelerates. The bobble gives him chance, a chance to catch up, makes the play. Good open field tackle. Virginia defenders pile on. They can't get the play off. Excellent job by Barber, breaking on the football. That's the end of the first half, and it has been some kind of battle. Virginia with a 10-point lead. Welcome back to Charlottesville, Virginia. Steve Zabriskie along with Gary Reasons. We're getting ready for the start of the second half with Virginia leading North Carolina by 10. And let's go look at how it happened. First of all, Virginia, as Mike Rowe threw a pass to Tyrone Davis, took a 10 to nothing lead. Tyrone Davis, a little spin right here. We talked about in the first half. Nice throw. He's a big receiver. After Virginia made it 17 to nothing, Carolina started to come back. William Henderson, the fullback, broke off a 54-yarder that set up Carolina's touchdown. Yeah, big run there. Some missed tackles along the way. The big fullback just carries some people all the way down to the three-yard line. Two plays later, Henderson took it in. And then at the end of the half, Carolina did a good job of getting down there, but then ran out of time. Stanisek throws to the sideline. He wants his receiver wall to get out of bounds, but he turns back inside of the field. Good tackle by Rondé Barber. Virginia defense is there. They're trying to rush on the field. They've got about five seconds to stop the clock or kick the field goal, rather. They couldn't stop it. They had no timeouts. Didn't have an opportunity to put points on the board. They had an opportunity with about two minutes to go, and they made about 90% of it, but the last 10% they couldn't get a hold of. There's William Harrison, 245 pounder. Statistically in the first half, it got a little closer in the second quarter after Virginia just dominated about the first quarter and a half. For North Carolina, you can see the rushing yards. They're used to having a lot more than that. Over 200 yards normal for them, 85 yards today. As Steve said, most of it in the second half. The time of possession, though, look at Virginia, 1845. Carolina had deferred after winning the toss to open the ball game, so they're going to get the ball to start the second half, and it is Marcus Ball number 14 deep in the middle. Rafael Garcia hits it very high and very short in a fair catch called for by one of the up men for Carolina, number 13, Kevin Addis. So Carolina will have about their best field position after a kickoff starting at their own 36. Mac Brown the subject of some rumors that he might be in line for the coaching job at Oklahoma if the Sooners were to get rid of Gary Gibbs. Mac has laughed it off and thinks that it's not very serious. Well his new marriage I believe to a, to a North Carolina lady the, might want to have him back there on that state next year. <laughs> Malcolm Marshall starts the game along with Curtis Johnson and Johnson carries it up to about the 39. Take a look at what Carolina did here in the first half. Three plays and punt, three plays and punt, three plays and punt. Then they had the big touchdown there. Interception and then loss on downs. They couldn't, couldn't put points on the board at the end of the first half. We talked at the beginning of the game about how North Carolina's rushing will go up against Virginia's outstanding rushing defense. Well, Virginia's rushing defense, with the exception of a 54-yard run by Harrison, has won the battle so far. Stanisek on the option. 
Gets a couple is all to about the 41. Randy Neal, number six, and number 33, Jamie Sharper, drag him down. This Virginia defense, the linebackers are very fast. Watch Randy Neal. All he does is flow down the line. He's in pace with Stanisek the whole way. Makes good, good decision there. He doesn't pitch the ball. Neal inside makes a good tackle. So it brings up third down and five yards to go. Stanisak with time, intercepted. Picked off by Jamie Ferrier, and James Ferrier with a return inside the 10. Nice job that time by Ferrier. All he's doing is playing his coverage out in the zone. The weak side, the strong side flat, they hit a slot formation. Stanisak rolls to the slot side. You see Ferrier here, he's just gonna drop back into coverage. I think he may be a little bit surprised by this pass. He's got a receiver behind him. He steps in front. I don't believe Stanisek even saw him. Fayer has four or five speed in the 40. He's, he's got to outrun his blockers here. Stanisek got in on the tackle, but not before Ferrier brought it back. 35 yards. It is first down at the 13 of North Carolina. Mike Grove looking over the middle. Almost intercepted by Mike Morton, number 58. Almost had the same thing that Stanisek happened a minute ago. I don't think that Mike Gross saw that linebacker come across in front of Davis. That's for sure. Could have been a big play there by Morton. Virginia's defense with a big play, and North Carolina almost returned. The right side of your screen. You see Morton right in the midst. I guess that's why he's a linebacker and not a tight end. He's a this guy's a very smart guy on defense. He's a, a real reliable player for them. On second and ten, Kevin Brooks jammed backwards after a short game. He got it down to about the 12. Mike Morton again on the play. Carolina's leading tackler, number 58. Gain of one. It'll be third and nine. from the shotgun and he pitches it to Brooks Brooks trying to turn the corner he cannot good job by Sean Boyd 28 the strong safety who supported well riding Kevin Brooks out of bounds watch Davis he comes in he's going to seal the defensive end boom pretty good hot shot there on Sturgis Brooks is around the corner, has a blocker out front. Pretty good block there by the big uh, wide receiver. That's something that the pros are really looking for these days. Big guys, receivers that were willing to block. When you're going to block a 270-pound defensive tackle, it's something very impressive. Rafael Garcia will attempt a 24-yard field goal. Tim Sherman, the holder, and it is good. Garcia to the lead. It is 20 to 7. Virginia in the third. Well, he's wearing UVA colors. He ought to be happier than that. Maybe he didn't care for his <laughs> lunch. He may be wearing more of his lunch than he got in there. Uh, yeah, that's all right. Dad's going to help him out. Yeah, Dad's going to help him out. I think Dad's going to sacrifice his shirt or handkerchief one here. Anyway, they're coming in all ages, shape, sizes, and everything else to see Virginia. Well, points off turnovers have been a big part of Virginia's game this year, and there's another indication with the field goal by Garcia. 58 points off turnovers. That's very impressive. Earlier in the season, Carolina had a real problem with turnovers. They thought they might have eliminated it the last two games with only a total of two, but they've heard them again today. Short kick taken by Allen for Greg Williams. Greg Williams, number three, rather than Allen, number two. Malcolm Marshall and Curtis Johnson in the backfield behind Stanisak. First and down from the first and ten from the 26, and Curtis Johnson gains a yard or two is all. Jamie Sharper and Percy Ellison doing a good job. 
I'm impressed with Sharper as a linebacker. He showed me he has the ability to get around the field, play the run well. Virginia linebacker core is very, very strong. Sharper only a sophomore out of Richmond. From the 31. Second down, about eight. Stanisek trying to run the option. Curtis Johnson out of bounds at about the 33. Carl Smith, the safety, and Rondé Barber chased him out. There was a lot of traffic in that backfield for trying to run the option play. Sure, we'll take a look here. Mike Frederick from the outside. Good pressure up the field. Throws the timing off. Stanisek has the presence of mind to get the pitch. It's a long pitch. Makes something here out of nothing. I tell you, pretty good pressure there by Virginia defense. Third down three. William Henderson into the game at fullback and Leon Johnson at tailback. Leon, first down. He bangs it out to the 39 in the grasp of number six, Randy Neal. 47, Carl Smith also coming up to support. Take a look here. You're going to see penetration on your left side of the, on the bottom right part of your screen. You see Keel come through there, number 99. Gets him around the legs. Misses a tackle. Otherwise, it's a tackle for loss. Good running there by the, by the tailback, Johnson. 11 and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Virginia with the lead and Carolina on first down, optioning to Johnson. Leon makes one guy miss and then is busted out of bounds by Percy Ellsworth. Virginia leading 20 to 7. Here's Stanisek coming at you again. Frederick is up the field again, causing havoc there. The linebacker, Farrier, almost gets him. Good pitch outside. Rondé Barber missed tackle again. Ellsworth comes over and makes the play. Barber's got to be a better tackler in the open field. Take a look at there. Mac Brown, he's watching this Carolina offense go down the field. Henderson on second down, plowing out near midfield. He'll be short of the first down. As he gets to about the 48, dragged down by Dwayne Ashman, number 94. We talked about how this Virginia defense has been so strong against the run. You can see that here in the third quarter, 247 not even halfway there. Yeah, 247 yards are used to running. This Virginia defense is coming out big today. Third and one, and Harrison has a first down. 240-pounder out of Chester, Virginia. Bangs it out to the 50. James Ferrier, 42 and 94. Wayne Ashman. Good push that time by the center, Don Meredith, and Russell Bam with the right guard. Gave it enough room to push for that first down. Right at midfield. Leon Johnson, no roll there. Leon trying to find a seam will gain about three. Down in the Virginia 47. John Harris in the defensive end, a sophomore out of Inwood, New York, making the tackle. Hey, look at Mac Brown. They've got a shiner under his right eye. Maybe something happened at halftime. He didn't have that in the first half, I don't believe. Maybe a little physical out there in the about that but couldn't find out exactly how that happened to him second down about eight trying to run the reverse they run into each other somehow Marcus Wall came up with the football off the turf and is still going but he is driven to the ground as he crosses the 45 of Virginia Carl Smith 47 and Ryan Keel 99 possibility for disaster there you see Stanisek, Wall comes back this way, going to pitch it, Johnson, boom, right in the way, almost knocks him down. Ball takes a good bounce for Carolina. Comes around, he's going to run right into Rondé Barber, make the tackle, Rondé, boom, runs over him. Down the field for three or four more yards. Made something out of nothing that could have been a disaster. He ran 30 yards to gain three. Third down and long. Stanisek under pressure. Now he flips it and it's tipped away at the last second by Ferrier. 
improvisation by Stanisek, trying to find some room back there. The Virginia defense had pressure. He's going to roll. He comes around. He's trying to point out for blockers. He's thinking he's going to run. Oh, he sees an open receiver. Farrier, good presence of mind, gets a hand up. He was trying to reach Johnson, the tailback, out in the flat. So fourth and five at the 45. Carolina will punt it away. Mike Thomas trying to hang it high. Fair catch called for by Percy Ellsworth that bounds at the one and goes in and out of the end zone for a touchback. 8.37 to go in the third quarter. Virginia with the lead and the football back to them. You saw the rotunda here, the statue of Thomas Jefferson, one of the greatest men in the history of this country, and certainly here in Virginia, started, founded the University of Virginia, his home we saw earlier, Monticello, just a few miles from downtown. A great legacy left by Thomas Jefferson in Virginia. Kevin Brooks in a tailback, first and ten. Cavaliers, Grove, flipping it out to Charles Way, the fullback. And Way still going. Charles Way inside the 25. Nice job of mixed direction by this Virginia offense. Way, the fullback, is wide open in the flat. Linebackers must have been flowing. We'll take another look at it here. You see as Mike Rowe throws it out to Way in the flat, there's nobody around him. He's got enough speed to get up the field. He breaks the tackle right here. Big Neely is right in front of him, get a block. He's hunking it down the field pretty good right there. Finally, number 54, James Hamilton ran him down, but not before the play went 59 yards. Rowe now has passed for over 200 yards. Kevin Brooks inside the 20 for a gain of three to the 19. Greg Black, number 56. Dropped his 290 pounds. Rick Terry, 94 in there as well. This Virginia offense has a lot of versatility, a lot of players making a contribution. You see Brooks and Way. Quarterback Mike Rowe is having a really splendid day. I think they're also mixing it up quite well, Gary. They haven't been very predictable. Rowe throwing it incomplete. It was intended for number two, Demetrius Allen, and Jimmy Hitchcock, number 18, had the coverage. Good job by Hitchcock. One pass that got away from Grow today. That's not, not something he's been doing earlier in the game. Virginia has run the ball 29 times and thrown 17 passes. I think each of these teams ideally would like to have more rushing plays than passing. That's a good mix up for Virginia. Two to one running. Third down and eight. Grow completing it. Derek Bird breaks away. Bird inside the 10. Wide receiver screen missed tackles. That's, the, that's what happened on that play. Bird, he's got blockers in front of him. Fuzzy Lee finally brought him down. Bird, I don't know how he got through there. Take a look here. Grove throws to his left. Bird right there. They should make the play in the backfield. These guys get through the blockers. Bird turns something into a pretty good game there on a busted, busted play by the defense. They should make those tackles. First down goal at the nine. Brooks breaking through. Touchdown. with his second touchdown of the day. And Virginia keeps the pressure on. Garcia for yet another extra point. 7-18 left in the third. It's a 20-point Virginia lead. Watch the blocking here by the fullback. Good block inside. Rayleigh, the left guard, heat the center. Open a big hole for Brooks. His power takes it into the end zone. Welsh and company, led by Mike Groh, went 80 yards in five plays in just a minute 19 to score. And 
Carolina will try to get good field position again as Marcus Wall. Marcus Wall still spinning and gets it out near midfield. Carl Smith finally brought him down. Let's go back and take a look at the touchdown run by Kevin Brooks. When you've got a fullback that can block like Chris Wayne, look at that, just takes the linebacker down to the ground, makes it an easy day for the tailback. I tell you, Kevin Brooks, he's a happy camper, isn't he? Still celebrating on the sidelines. <laughs> guys are having fun today. A 20-point lead for Virginia. Carolina with good field position. Stanisek trying to go to work. And he hits Ashford. Hammered out of bounds by Carl Smith. A little bit short of the first down. Aaron Ashford, a sophomore from Richton, Illinois. Good work by NC that time. They're trying to utilize the room in the flat. Make the linebackers go out there and make the play or have the corner come from a deep position up and make an open field tackle. A gain of nine. Second down and a long one to go. Harrison may have it. It'll be close. Mike Frederick, number 95, met him right in the hole. Henderson is 6'2 and 240. Frederick is 6'6 and 255. It's a pretty good collision. Yeah. Well, William Henderson has had quite a day at fullback, not only the 54 yard run, but he has done a great job blocking. Got a penalty on the play. They didn't get the call, but they moved the chains on us here. It is a first down as the ball is moved to the 39. Offsides against the Virginia defense. So it didn't make any difference whether Henderson got the first down or not. It would have been close. But the penalty gives it to them. On the option pass, Stanisek hits Ashford. And Ashford, after a gain of about seven, thrown out of bounds by Ron Day Barber. Good job of execution that time by NC. Take a look at Rondé Barber. He's going to close on the play. Stanisek, good throw, throws it to the outside. Nice grab. Good utilization of the field. The corners are playing off a little bit. Might as well come up and make, get a seven or eight yards in the flat. Stanisek to the air again. Looking for Ashford, and either Ashford or Stanisek was confused. James Ferrier, 42, had the coverage, but the receiver was not where Stanisek threw the ball. Stanisek has completed 11 of 23 so far for 108 yards, no touchdowns, and two interceptions. Third down, a long three to go. Leon Johnson appears to be stopped short of the first down. He needed to get to the 29, and he looks to be at the 30. Skeet Jones and Jamie Sharper made the tackle. Skeet Jones, 32, is in there again for Randy Neal, who, remember, has been bothered by that bad knee. And it is going to be fourth and one. Good surge that time. Watch Keel, the left defensive tackle. He makes pressure. He gets in the backfield. Causes the running back to change lanes, and they stop short of the first down. Carolina will go for it. Johnson has it, and then some. Leon hauled down at about the 17 by Joe Crocker, number four. Oftentimes in short yardage plays, they're trying to get one yard, it'll turn into 10 or 15. All the players are trying to come up and make the play. You're going to see here, they've got some missed tackles at the point of attack here. You see Farrier coming up into the hole, has a clean shot in the backfield, misses a tackle, gets up with a big play and a big first down. They mark the ball closer to the 16, where it is first and 10, Carolina. Marshall back in at fullback. And he keeps his feet moving and gains five down near the 11. 
Malcolm Marshall at 6'2 and 245 out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina, stopped by Carl Smith. Not only am I impressed with Curtis Johnson, Leon Johnson at tailback, these two fullbacks, Marshall and Henderson in their own right, very good running backs, good, good opportunity running with the football when they get it, and they block extremely well, both of them. In spite of the fact that Carolina hasn't run the ball that well today, they have been leveling people. Preliminary movement along the line. It looked like 75, Byron Thomas. On the left side, the tackle on the left side may have moved too soon. Illegal procedure against the offense. Yeah, take a look here on the left side. You'll see the left left guard and tackle and tight end. Everybody moves. I think Stanisek may have been trying to reset the count. Might have been a hurry up count. You see the offensive lineman down. Usually they're going to go on a quick count when all the offensive are linemen down. He was probably trying to change the play at the line of scrimmage. And then Jernet Gezer gathers number 74 also moved too soon. Here's what the Johnsons have done today, and it's not their usual output. Stanisek running the option, has nobody to pitch to, but he cuts it up inside, and he's inside the five. Paul London, number five, hauled him down, or he might have been in the end zone. Virginia did a good job of defensing the pitch, Gary, and Stanisek had no choice. Stanisek did a good job here. You see Randy Neal from the end zone. He's hobbled a little bit. He turned his ankle in the first half. I don't think he's at full speed here. You see him. He can't make the cut. He can't get there to Stanisek. He's limping coming behind the play. He's usually a pretty good open field tackler. On a normal day, he'd make that play. But Stanisek, who's as tough as they come at quarterback, jammed it up in there and has a first and goal at the two and a half after a gain of 14. Curtis Johnson will not get to the end zone. Nice job of bunching things up for the by the Virginia defense in there. And now Curtis will go out of the game. He's gained only 15 yards. Leon with 36 today, a little bit better average per carry. Well, these these guys, guys are used to 100 yards each in a game. Right, 1,000 yards apiece last season. Not even close to that today. Number six is Chris Watson, a backup fullback who comes in in the power eye formation. Leon Johnson. Did he get in? No. It's going to be third and goal as Jamie Sharper, 33 and 91, Todd White, jammed it up. They look from the goal line. You see the surge here by the Virginia defense. Keel, Frederick, linebackers come over, make the tackle. Good tackle there by Sharper. He may have even lost yardage on that play. This is the tenth play of the drive. The ball at the one half yard line, and the Virginia fans are up and screaming. <laughs> Penalty flag. Stanisek on the pitch, Leon Johnson in the end zone, but a penalty flag thrown by the referee. An illegal shift in the backfield will wipe out the touchdown. Big, big penalty. Mistakes down here in the scoring zone are very, very costly. Opportunity to put points on the board, now they're gonna back up five yards. A lot different play calling when it's third and five in the red area. As I was saying, it's a lot, a lot more difficult to call a play from the five-yard line in the red area, trying to score inside the 20. That's the red area. Now watch Chris Watson, number six. Does he move toward the line of scrimmage or anything? I, I, I can't see anything. I don't know what he's seeing there. Maybe the tight end, which wasn't in the frame of the picture, moved. But well, Mike Dover threw the flag immediately. It's still third and goal, but now from outside the five, Stanisek on the option again, and he won't get there. Dwayne Ashman, number 94, and Jamie Sharper knock him down short of the goal line. It's fourth and goal. Good job of pursuit by Ashman here. You see the containment, we're going to see it on the outside here. Watch the Virginia defense. They're going to string it out down the field. Ashman, good, good ability, comes back, stays on the play, going to make the tackle there along with Sharper. Good defense right there as Frederick obviously is excited about that one. 
Mac Brown getting frustrated. They've had chances. They've been unable to stick it in the end zone except for the touchdown set up by Henderson's 54 yard run. Trip Pignetti on to attempt the field goal. It'll be a 21 yard attempt. And it is good. So that's all they can get with 146 remaining in the third. Virginia 27 to 10. This is obviously a swing game in the ACC as far as the standings are concerned for both North Carolina and Virginia. Here's what else happened today with Florida State a little tougher than expected against Clemson but winning and Duke remaining unbeaten all over Wake Forest. Tonight Georgia Tech and Maryland will play and NC State is idle. North Carolina State taking the week off. I'm sure they're watching this ball game. They're going to be playing North Carolina next week. It'll be one of the ABC regional coverage games. There are the updated standings of the conference with Florida State and uh, Talking Duke's with win. They're both undefeated in the conference along with NC State. Talking with both of these staffs, seems like they're all trying to play for second place now. Florida State is out in front at 5-0 and in the conference, and they're... Uh, they're not looking to have them lose, so the pride is now on the line for second place in this conference, and there's four or five teams that are vying for that spot. Well, there are also some major bowl implications, too, because the team that finishes second is going to get the next best bowl game. George Welsh here, he's had, had these guys in the bowl five the last seven years. He's certainly looking to do that again this year, and his Virginia Cavaliers are not disappointing him today. Well, an 11 play drive as Carolina could only get the field goal. Demetrius Allen, number two, and Tiki Barber back to receive the kickoff. Caparelli's kick will be short. Allen at about the 16. Still going. And finally hauled down near the 33. Clay Eddy, number 31, a redshirt freshman. Out of Monroe, North Carolina made the tackle. Nebraska all over Missouri as we run down the top 25 scores for you. And Miami, as expected, handling West Virginia. Look at this one. In the third, Ole Miss still leading Alabama 10 to nothing. And Texas A&M just did get by that surprising Rice team. Washington trailing Oregon by four in the third. That's a battle. Told you about Florida State. Michigan leading Illinois. Tiki Barber is in a tailback and has the ball and a bit of a hole as he's out near the 38. Marcus Jones, number 71, and 54 James Hamilton on the tackle. Just good straight ahead running by the Virginia offense. Chris Way leads the leads the charge and fullback. Tiki Barber just reads the blocks, cut back. Good gain there, about six yards on the play. Utah in that battle of unbeatens leading Colorado State by two points. Second down, about five yards to go. Charles Way, the fullback, has the first down. Running hard, out to about the 46. Dragged down by Greg Ellis, number 87, from defensive end. Final minute of the third quarter. Ellis now will come out on first down. Ohio State over Purdue and BC and Rutgers playing through a tie. Barber bouncing outside. And a good gain on first down of about seven as he takes it into North Carolina territory before Eric Thomas, the free safety number 38, and number 58, Mike Morton bringing down. Good job at the uh, right tackle there, Chris Harrison. He takes his guy inside. Tiki Barber has enough presence to find the hole just around the right end. Well, Virginia's going to let the clock run out here in the third quarter. They have had it their way most of this game. They have won the last six meetings with North Carolina here at Scott Stadium. And at the end of the third, they lead it 27 to 10. More action here from Charlottesville after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Ready for the final 15? Glad you're with us as we bring you ACC action from Charlottesville here on ABC Sports. 
at starting the fourth quarter 27 to 10 Virginia leading and the Cavaliers have it Charles way breaking it for the first down and inside the Carolina 40 before Greg Black number 56 can drag him down. They look at the three quarters. UNC is catching up in total yardage. Still a bit off their mark in rushing yardage. Time of possession is about even now. The two turnovers by North Carolina may loom big. Mike Groh's ability to pass for over 200 yards in three quarters, a big part of his game. 17-point lead. Way now, gained 32 yards. Tiki Barber. With a gain of a couple to about the 36 before he's dropped by Mike Morton and Oscar Brown, number two. Again, we will continue to keep you up to date on everything that has happened and is happening in college football today. South Carolina beat Bandy by three. Daryl Medley, number 34, in at fullback. Play action. Mike Rowe, under some pressure, fires it out of bounds and complete on the sidelines. However, not a player. Play action. They're trying to get the big one, Anton Davis, out. Tyrone Davis, rather, back in the end zone on a flag pattern. Tyrone couldn't get away from the cornerback. Good job of coverage there, so Rowe has to throw it away. Army won a ball game. Beat Citadel by a point. Pretty good game. Third and eight. Good protection. Over the middle, Tyrone Davis, touchdown! A 35-yard TD as Davis ran right out of the grasp of Sean Boyd to score again. Excellent pass by Mike Groh. He's got a big target there, and Davis coming across the field. Sees him the shotgun. He looks to his right. He knows he's got Davis on the inside cut. He wants to separate, have the safeties look away with his look, move them out of the way so Davis can get in there. Good pass right in the chest. Davis' second touchdown reception of the day. He has 117 yards receiving as Rafael Garcia adds yet another extra point and a proud a daddy, yeah. I tell you, he's a proud daddy. He sure should be. His son is having a whale of a ball game. Virginia now with a 24-point lead on this 35-yard, almost perfect play. Back about 1971, a fellow named Tyrone Davis had a hit song called Turn Back the Hands of Time. Well, this Tyrone Davis is trying to do that right now, turning back the hands of time and eclipsing Herman Moore's touchdown record. He's one away now. After this, this guy looks like he can make it in the NFL, Gary. I think he has the tools. He has the size, the speed, the ability to get open. I'll tell you, a lot of NFL teams would love to have a big receiver like this. Can be an impact player. One touchdown away from tying Herman Moore's record. And another impressive drive. Just three minutes and seven plays. A big 35-yarder to cap it off. Mike Rowe throwing the ball in there very well. He's had good touch on the ball for most of the day. I think Tyrone Davis likes his work. Marcus Wall back to receive the kickoff. Garcia hits it high and deep. Wall about two or three yards deep. Better just down it, and he does. After bobbling it a little bit. I wonder if Mike Rose out of the game. He's got a baseball cap on. And they may replace him the next series. William Henderson's in along with Leon Johnson in the backfield for North Carolina. Stanisek, play action. Under pressure getting the screen, and Henderson will go nowhere. What a job by James Ferrier, who did not take the fake. Ferrier had this guy on the screen all the way. Good job for the linebacker sneaking under the blockers, just waiting for him to throw it out there. To just kind of laying in the weeds and trying to make a play, and he sure does. The play gained only a yard. It'll be second down and nine. Mac Brown trying to find a way to get some offense. I think they've got to stretch the defense a little more than they've been doing there. It's 
Great drop back. Stanisek under pressure again. Gets it away to Greg DeLong, the tight end. And DeLong has the first down up near the 33. Ferrier again on the tackle. John Saunders with the update. Steve, Ole Miss had a 10-0 lead over Alabama in the Crimson Tide at halftime. First and goal at the two, though. Sherman Williams, good job to muscle his way into the end zone to get the Tide on the board. 10-7, they trail, though. Steve. Thank you, John. That's a bit of a surprise, but Bama coming back. Carolina on first down, a delay to Leon Johnson. And Leon dragged down at the 40 by Perry Ellsworth, 27, the safety. Nice execution on the draw play. Nice deep handoff, good fake. Runs around the corner, gets a good gain on first down. Carolina trailing by 24 points with 12 minutes, 20 seconds remaining in the game. They're now looking at second down and about four. Malcolm Marshall, number 30, in at fullback. Stanisek swings it out to Johnson. Leon has a first down. Staying on his feet and finally ridden out of bounds by Skeet Jones, number 32, at about the 41 of Virginia. A little swing pass to Johnson that time. He's got blockers out front. We've seen it two or three times a day. Good block here by the wide receiver, Marcus Wall. He's going to seal his, his block. Give Johnson a chance to come by. Look at that. Good opportunity here. Good running there by the running back. Gain of 20. First and 10 at the Virginia 41. Stanisek firing it out to Wall and bumped out of bounds as he gets to about the 36. Pushed out by Carl Smith, 47. This is what Stanisek can do. I mean, here's a guy that has shown his toughness, his leadership capability, setting all kinds of school records, passing at North Carolina. And uh, with their offense and his capability, they're certainly not beyond reason of coming back, but they're going to have to score er quickly and often. I think you need to throw the ball down the field a little bit more. He's only had one pass downfield over 15 yards that I recall. Trying to go to the flat a little bit too much. It's hard road to get there to the end zone from the flat. And he's throwing it out there again. Complete to the tight end, Freddie Jones, number 92. But again, short gain of about six yards. We want to remind you that uh, time permitting, stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental Post Game Report. Scores and highlights from all across the country. Time permitting at the end of the game, the Thrifty Car Rental Post Game Report. Third down and about a yard to go. And I don't know. It's going to be very close. Nice Malcolm job, Marshall hit immediately by Ryan Keel and Skeet Jones. And we've got a motion panel there on the offense, so they're going to get backed up another five. But nice job there by Keel, getting some pressure in there. Good tackle. Five yards. Dead ball. False start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. Here's Stanisek's numbers on the day. Pretty good numbers, except for the two INTs. He'd probably like to have a little more yardage. He throws the ball down the field later in this game here. He may have that. Now it's third and six. That's the last thing Carolina needed was a penalty on third down especially. Short drop, incomplete. Intended for Marcus Wall, but he short hopped it. Wouldn't have had the first down if he had made the catch. He wasn't over the yard line. Well, let's see what they do here toward the end of the third quarter. Matt Brown decided to go for the field goal on fourth down. Of course, they're down even farther than they were then, down by 24 points at this point. They don't have a whole lot of choice. They have got to go for it. On fourth down and about six yards to go. William Henderson in at fullback. Randy Neal in defensively for Virginia, and now the official stopping play as something, a tennis ball, came onto the field. Somebody threw a tennis ball on the field, and alertly the officials saw it. There's one of the chain gang getting rid of it. On fourth down conversions today, 
Carolina is two for two. It's fourth and six. Stanisek incomplete. Intended for Octavius Barnes, but Joe Cocker Crocker was there. Octavius should have made that grab. It was right in the breadbasket. Although the coverage was over the top, he should have made that play. Could have been a nice first down. You see Stanisek, he's got his man all the way. Looking down underneath, throws it down nice and low. Good break over the top there by the defender, but I think Octavius could have caught that ball. You see it again here. Watch the hand come in, knocks it away. Oh, nice play by the back. Boy, the hometown faithful at Scott Stadium have had a big day, and Mac Brown has not. I think that black eye might be indicative of the times that he has brought his Carolina team here. They have not yet won a game against Virginia with him as head coach in this stadium. Tyrone Davis coming up big again. Makes the reception and has it out to about the 42 on first down. Hauled down by Sean Boyd. Look at big Tyrone here. He's going to come back inside. Just flares back out. It's misdirection. Mike Groves rolling this way. He's got him in the flat all the way. They're going to give his big guy a lot of room. And those defensive backs, when you got to tackle a 225-pound wide receiver, it's a long day. On top of that, at 6'5", he can get up above most defensive backs quite easily. Gain of seven, second down, three. Flags all over the place. Somebody a big, little too quick. Big John, Big John Slocum, the right guard, has had a really good day, as has his, as has his whole Virginia offensive line. Well, Air McNair must have come back and done something because Alcorn State pulled it out over Southern after trailing late to win it 41 37. Five yard mark off as Slocum moved too early. That'll move the ball back inside the 40. They're wahooing it up big time here. Now from the Virginia 38. It'll be second and eight. North Carolina has to think turnover in this situation. They're down 24 points and need to get the ball back. Ten minutes left to go in this third quarter. George Welsh's team is well in control of this ball game. North Carolina like to get a turnover to set something up for their offense. The other thing I think that's important is that Carolina, with the exception of the one big run by Henderson, it hasn't really had anything to fire them up. Every time they've had an opportunity, they've either had to settle for a field goal or they've turned the ball over or given it up on down. Tiki Barber dipping in and out. Hitchcock finally wrestles him out. He ran some more seconds off the clock. We have nine minutes, 50 seconds remaining in the game. Tiki Barber with a good speed just tries to jump to the outside. Nothing happened inside. They did a good job on Carolina, with Carolina with their defense that time. Trying to go off tackle. Guard pulled around. Tiki Barber had no place else to go but, out, but outside. Oklahoma barely beat Kansas. Third and five from the 41. Tiki Barber again has the first down. Wrestled out of bounds on the far sideline by number two, Omar Brown. Tiki Brown shoots through the hole here. You'll see him in just a little dive play to the left, little missed, little counter step there. Comes in, you'll see at the end of the picture here, you got big Tyrone Davis out in front trying to block. He screens off that one defender. If Tiki cuts back inside, he's got more yardage. Darrell Medley had a good block on the play as well. A gain of 11. And Rondé Barber, who's played outstanding defense with now six interceptions, watching his twin brother from the sideline. Tiki Barber now has carried seven times for 34 yards. Medley, the fullback, going straight ahead, but stopped immediately by Eddie Mason, number 37. Nice hit there by Mason coming over the top. Mason, a senior out of Cider City, North Carolina. Here you see it again. Look at Mason. Good form tackle. 
It's exactly what you want. I think that he didn't have anywhere to go anyway. The defensive line had a really good surge at that time. No gain, so it's second and ten. Charles Way back in at fullback. Barber cannot get away. Not only good penetration by Andre Purvis, number 70, but also fine speed to run Barber down from behind. Good job by Carolina's defense stringing the play out. You saw Purvis come through. You'll see him here. He's at the right defensive tackle spot. He comes in there. He's got good speed, good leverage down the field. Good tackle on a fast back behind the line of scrimmage. Purvis weighs 295. Loss of a yard. Third and 11 from the Carolina 49. Pitches to Barber. And Barber across the 45, inside to about the 44, before Sean Boyd, 28, drags him out. Carolina, if they have any hope, they're going to have to stop Virginia first. And as you mentioned earlier, turnover would be something they'd be looking for, but Virginia now relentlessly yeah, they're moved the ball deep and will be able to punt it now, or should be able to punt it deep into Carolina territory. Virginia playing their cards really tight that time. They're not trying to throw the ball, not going to make mistakes. They know the field position game. They rely on their defense. Will Bryce, who's averaging 54 yards a punt. Coming into the game, Carolina led the nation in punt return, averaging 18 and a half yards a return. They have not gotten one yard on punt returns today. Johnson's going to have to watch this ball go out of bounds near the 15. No return yardage again for Carolina, but they'll have the ball when we come back. Carolina first and 10 deep in their own territory, and Mike Thomas in at quarterback. Incomplete, and Ferrier knocked it down. What a game James Ferrier has played for Virginia. Mike Thomas, the backup quarterback, who's 6'3 and 235, is in there here in the fourth quarter for North Carolina. Ferry just keeps showing me that he can run, he can run, he can run. He's out there in front of this pass, gets his hand up. If he'd have had two hands up on that one, he might have had a touchdown. 15 yards in front of him was the goal line. And Mike Thomas, he's getting indoctrinated into the game here. Gets his pass knocked down, gets knocked down to the ground. Incomplete. Intended for Leon Johnson. Got pressure that time from 91, Todd White. You see Mike Thomas's numbers on the years. Hasn't had a lot of time in there. Stanisek has had the majority of the work. I think it's a good opportunity here to get him into the ball game, see what he can do. 24 points, the difference still in the ball game, so they're trying to catch up. They're going to give Mike Thomas an opportunity to throw the football. Stanisek completed 16 of 30 for 150 yards, no touchdowns, and two interceptions. Third down. Thomas over the middle, incomplete and almost intercepted. It was intended for Octavius Barnes, and Joe Crocker had it on his fingertips but could not hold on. Take a look here by Thomas. He throws the ball. It gets tipped. Usually when tips happen, bad things happen for the offense. Almost Crocker has a fingertip to, uh, interception there. Good concentration by Crocker. So Mike Thomas will drop back to punt it away, and Percy Ellsworth, number 27, is back at his own 40 for Virginia. Ellsworth calling for the fair catch at the 48. Percy Ellsworth signals. We have 7 of 43 left to go in the game, and Carolina three and out once again, a 36-yard punt by Thomas. And Virginia not only with the lead, but again, terrific field position as they get the ball back. George Walsh has to be very happy with his Virginia team right now. Got control of this ball game. Mike Grill has really settled this offense down, throwing the ball real well. Execution has been very, very high for this offense. You see Charles Way run into the big defensive line of North Carolina. Only about a yard gain to the 
50 yard line. Second and nine. Mike Girls watching that play clock in the end zone. You take all 30 seconds if you can. Kevin Brooks in his tailback and some movement along the line as Carolina. Big John again, a little in. anxious. John Slocum, 64. Ball start. Not the Cavaliers. Yeah, you see on the left side of the screen, Big John there, John Slocum. He, knew. Uh, he knew it when it happened. He tried to save it, but there isn't <laughs> any saving it. Once you've done it, it's over. When you're that big, you're hard to miss. 298 pounder. That's only the third penalty against Virginia. And George Welch talking to John Slocum. I think he's taking him out of the game, get him a little, let him settle down a little bit, put somebody else in there, give him a little work. That moves him back to the 45. Second and 14. Brooks with a big hole, almost got all of it back. Eric Thomas, the free safety, 38, made the tackle. Kevin Brooks busting it up in there for a gain of 11. At this point in the game, it looks like Virginia's offensive line is taking over the ball game. This defensive unit of North Carolina, their spirit has to be broken just a little bit. They need to have a big play here to turn things around. Six minutes left in this ball game, 24 points. Maybe a, a tough thing to come back from, but they have to have something to build on for next week. They go back home and they play North Carolina State in a, a big ball game. Play action. Mike Rowe under some pressure will be sacked back at the 49. Greg Ellis, 87. Second time they've gotten to grow today. Really wasn't there or anything on in the passing game. They had good coverage by, de by the defense. Good job by North Carolina pressuring the quarterback. Nice sack. Riddick Parker, 97, also in there, along with Ellis. Well, that's what we were talking about, Virginia's punt coverage. Boy, I'll tell you what. Not only did Carolina come in with one of the top punt returning teams in the country, but Virginia's punt coverage remains superb. They've done a really good job today, and I think with Bryce here, being a left-footed punter, it really wreaks havoc for these returners. They're not used to seeing the ball spin the opposite way. He gets a lot of height on the ball. It comes down, and it's a tough ball to catch. They're not going to be able to return this one either, and a penalty flag goes down. Leon Johnson made the reception, and it may be that Sam McIver, number 14, violated that two-yard zone that you're supposed to give the receiver. Yeah, we've seen this more and more. They're trying to protect that receiver on the fair catch. Five yards. Five-yard penalty. Violation of the halo. Kick and team. That was a 40-yard punt by Will Bryce. Take a look at it. He does have the fair catch called. You have to give him a couple of yards there. 14. See, the ball's moving. That's yeah. kind of an iffy call there, guys. I, I thought it was weak. Uh, there's nobody around him within two to three yards. No. McIver can't see the ball coming down, and the receiver drifted into it. I think he was trying to get out of the way. you got to take into consideration that count. Henderson and Curtis Johnson in the backfield. Mike Thomas still a quarterback, and Curtis Johnson on a power play out across the 15. Near the 17 for a gain of about three. James Ferrier, 42, again making the stop. Yeah, you see the dominating performance by Virginia. They're scoring 10 points in the first quarter, 10 in the third, up to 34 here for the totals. Shutting North Carolina out here in the fourth quarter. Virginia took control of this ball game right off the bat with their opening drive, and they never relinquished it. Thomas on second down. Under some pressure, gets it away, complete to Barnes. And Octavius Barnes has a first down at the 30. Tackled by Paul London, number five. A gain of 13. Take a look at Barnes here. You're going to see the run. Starts off down the field. He's going to come across the field. Big wide receiver. Good target. Good throw by Thomas. Nothing fancy. Just getting behind the linebackers. Clock running with four minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the game. Thomas looking long. And Barnes is out there, and the pass is picked off. Rondé Barber 
with his second of the day and seventh of the season. I'll tell you, next year they may put Rondé both ways, put him as a wide receiver with that great speed that he has. Obviously, he's able to catch the football. Not only is it Rondé's second, but it's Virginia's third pick of the day. You see, Thomas, he's going to air one out here, throw it with all he has. Rondé Barber's just running back. Got good coverage on the receiver. Just comes down with a nice catch. For just a redshirt freshman, that young man's going to have a lot of nice football ahead of him. Virginia with first down. And flags fly. The whistle stopping play. They may not have gotten it off before the 25 second play clock, or there may have been movement. Illegal procedure against the offense. And Virginia will move it back. See those happy Cavaliers on the sideline, and they're right on top of Rondé. I said it from the start here. George Welsh has a, turned his program around since he's been here. Five the last seven years, they've been in bowl games. Big win today. They've got to be considered if they continue to dominate. Tiki Barber hurtling across the 20. Behind the blocking of number 52, Tom Lachlan. And getting it out about to the original line of scrimmage. Brian Simmons, number 41, and number 53, Kibusama Mays, making the tackle. George Welch has found out something about how to beat Mac Brown in Carolina, especially here at home. This will be seven in a row for Virginia here at Scott Stadium over North Carolina. Alabama has taken the lead in that game with Ole Miss. Tiki Barber to the outside. Knocked down as he crosses the 30 with yet another first down by number 25, Terry Phillips. Nice job by Barber there running outside. You see the wide receiver on that play, Derek Bird, with a good seal block, giving Barber an extra five to six yards on the outside. Playing good team offense, good team defense here for Virginia. Everyone's pitching in. Yeah, it's been a total team effort for the victory today and that's one reason they have been dominating. They also with a win today have guaranteed their eighth consecutive winning season. Medley. And Daryl Medley dragged down by Greg Ellis. Offensive line surge is still there for Virginia. They've got some younger guys in there given an opportunity to play. Utah leading the battle of unbeatens in the whack as they pulled ahead now 31 23 in the fourth. Here comes Mike Grow out of the ball game. We've got Tim Sherman in now. Mike gets a well-deserved round of applause here. I'm sure his father is standing up across the field. Really proud of what his son has done here today. Sophomore Tim Sherman from right here in Charlottesville hands off to Tiki Barber. And Barber picks his way across the 40. Sherman is 6'1 and 205, and with Grow being actually the second team quarterback at the start of the season behind Simeon Willis who have played very well till he injured his hamstring. Tim Sherman hasn't had hardly much of a chance to play at all. They really like Tim Sherman. He has a lot of ability. He's probably the fastest quarterback that they've had here in a long time. Good quickness. Give him a chance to get some work in here against a actually a beat down North Carolina defense right now. C.E. Rhodes in a tailback and he has the football as he bangs for a first down to the 45. Well the genuine Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Mike Grove from the University of Virginia who threw for over 200 yards today and from North Carolina fullback William Henderson who had that big 54 yard run and did a great job blocking Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievement and to assist those in financial need. So Al and Ann Grow had an opportunity with the Patriots off this weekend to come and see son Mike and he certainly did not disappoint. I'm really really happy for all of the Grow family to come down here. Al's doing a tremendous job with the Patriots this year and got a young guy here Chris Slade good defensive end here now a linebacker with the Patriots. I think he's down here watching the ball game also to see this Virginia team really manhandle the North Carolina Tar Heels at home here at Scott Stadium. You see the numbers for Mike Grove 15 completions 21 attempts no mistakes no interceptions good yardage 256 
nice did. nice day for Mike Rowe. And I think that's a good point Gary. Not only did he perform well but he didn't make mistakes. He made really good decisions and sometimes you know split second tough situations and that's that's an intangible that you really need from your quarterback. You know he hadn't been sacked uh, coming in here since he's been playing quarterback. He had two sacks today but I think they were ones that he needed to take instead of trying to throw an errant pass. Penalty move the ball back to the 40 but Sherman's just going to take a knee now as the clock continues to run as you see coming up on one minute remaining in the game. Well North Carolina next week is going to have to regroup because the Wolfpack will be coming to Chapel Hill to take on the Tar Heels and Virginia will have a leg up on chasing Florida State in the ACC standing. You see walking away from us here defense coordinator Rick Lance he's got to be extremely proud of this defense. They came up big against this number one rushing ACC offense. We we'll talked about that at the start of the telecast and that was really a difference here. They've got some tremendous speed on this team. You see uh, Lance there he's very happy I talked with him. He's got some NFL experience himself. He coached for the Patriots in 81. It's a happy Cavalier ball club here at Scott Stadium. This crowd is very happy. You see the Hankies rolling in the stands the same picture on the North Carolina sideline. Mac Brown scratching his head trying to figure out what went wrong today. He's going to come over and congratulate George Welsh. A very deserved victory here for a, a team that played extremely well throughout the day. You see the students come onto the field now. Very very happy. I, I think these goal posts are in jeopardy Steve. They're trying to guard him. Well Mac Brown's had a tough time coming here seven in a row. Virginia has beaten North Carolina here at Scott Stadium. George Welch and the Cavaliers do it again and do it big 34 to 10 in this the 99th meeting between these two great rivals. Over 40,000 saw it and most of those are going to go home happy. These fans are very excited about this Cavalier program. One loss at the hands of Florida State at the beginning of the season. Stay with us. We'll return to Charlottesville, Virginia, in just a minute. Virginia beats North Carolina 34 to 10. 